Ladies and gentlemen, I told you at the beginning of this trial that this case was about uh, a man doing his job. Uh, that Quincy Smith on January the 1st answered the call. That he didn't know Malcolm Moore and he had nothing personally against him. But his job was to respond when somebody said, there's a man out here trying to rob people, he's wearing a camouflage suit, he's wearing a red bandana. I have charged him with two offenses. One is attempted murder. The other is the possession of a firearm during the commission of a violent crime. The issue in this case revolves around the attempted murder because if you don't find him guilty of attempted murder, the gun charge, you should not find him guilty of that either. The issue in this case, though, is whether or not Malcolm Moore intended to kill Quincy Smith, a police officer from Estill. That's the issue. Now, what the judge will explain to you is that the law behind this and what the attempted murder is, is the unlawful attempt to kill someone with malice. Now, in order for me to prove that to you, I needed to first prove to you identification. I need to prove to you that this man over here, now sitting in a light blue shirt with a tie, was the man that day wearing the camouflage suit with the red bandana that shot Quincy Smith. It's identification, and I have to prove that. So let's take a look very quickly at the evidence that we presented to prove just that. After the video was downloaded, two people who lived in Estill, who've lived there all their lives, two firemen, looked at the video and said, I know him, I've known him all my life. One knew him as Mac Mac, and the other knew him as Malcolm Moore. That produced the photograph that everybody went out looking for, and that's the same photograph of the person that's sitting in this courtroom. If that wasn't enough, however, you got his cell phone. What we introduced to the cell phone was the cell phone that was left at the scene, broken in two, not shot in two like he said, but broken in two. And then held two texts. One saying, this is Mac Mac, and the other said, this is my new cell phone number, this is Malcolm. That was the cell phone at the scene. Now, if that's all you had, that would still be pretty good identification. Two people that have known him his whole life looking at the video saying that's Malcolm Moore. The fact that they arrested him wearing the same clothes that he was in before except for the jacket. The fact that they pulled the bandana out of his pocket when they arrested him. But if that's not enough, you can look at it yourself. And you can make that decision yourself without that testimony. Is that the same man in this picture? Is that the same man that held a gun to the face of a police officer and shot it? Not once, not twice, not three times, but eight times. The second issue is whether or not he intended to kill him. Most of us realize that if you take a gun and you shoot somebody in the face with it, you're intending to kill them. But think about what the doctor told you. The doctor came in here and testified that the bullet severed a vein, severed a vein in his neck, that he had had people before actually die just because of that. That fortunately it had clotted inside and so there wasn't a lot of blood despite the fact that as the EMS technician explained, his, his neck was literally flayed open from the bullet and that he could see the inside of the trachea. The doctor testified that the bullet cut that vein, that fortunately it had clotted, but when they got into the emergency room and they operated, started operating on him, it burst forth and started filling with blood again. And that was the low pressure vein, not the artery that's right beside it that hit the bullet clip that. Quincy Smith wouldn't have made it off of the road that day. Whether or not there's intent to kill, I think that's pretty clear as well. So then the last element of attempted murder is this. It's malice. What is malice? And what the judge is going to explain to you is that somebody acts with malice when they act with a total disregard for human life. And we think of malice as somebody that's, that's mean or hateful, and it's not something that has to be developed over time. It can happen almost instantaneously. And what you have an advantage of that so many people don't. What you have an advantage of is you saw this crime. You saw it. 
whether or not Malcolm Moore acted with malice is your final decision. And I would submit to you that the evidence is overwhelming when it comes to how he acted that day. Number one, before the officer even got there, before the officer even got there, he's wearing this red bandana around his face, hiding his identity, wearing a hunting suit, and carrying illegally a 9mm loaded handgun, harassing people as they're coming out of the store. Is it that alone, somebody who is acting with malice? And then when the police officer tried to stop him, again, you saw the video, but I want to ask you a question. Looking at these series of photographs, I want you to tell me what's on his face. How does his face look? Does he look afraid? Does he look concerned? No, not in that one. Or in that one? Or in that one? Or in that one? Or in that one? The defense tried to tell you, well, he was afraid for his life, except that, does he look afraid? Again, you had the advantage of actually seeing this crime take place. And if at any point you can look at his face and he looks afraid, <clears throat> then that's a different view than any of these pictures. And you heard the jail call where his girlfriend asked him not once but twice, hey, what happened out there? Seriously, what, what were you thinking? Was his response, oh, I was afraid. Oh, no, not once did he say that. And he's not talking to police officers. He's talking to somebody that Supposedly, he says he loves when he's on the phone with He's laughing about the number of police officers that came out there. But what does he say happened? First time, my honor. That was his first answer. And I apologize for the language, but what was the second answer he gave? He just rolled up and I said, fuck it. Not, I was afraid. Not, I was concerned. But, fuck it. That's a total disregard for somebody else's life. And if that's not enough, again, you saw this crime. You see the person in this courtroom who committed this crime. But I want you to go back and I want you to look at one more thing. If you truly want to decide whether or not Malcolm Moore acted in malice that day, I want you to think of something. He shot either hitting or tried to hit Officer Smith not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times, not six, not seven, but eight times. Eight times. Can you play this video? I want you to watch something. Volume. You know, it's not, I'm not pledging. I'm not, I'm not pledging. Take your hands out your pocket. Take your hands out your pocket. Take your hands out your pocket. Okay, hey, stop it. Rewind back to the, uh, go back. video is from his glasses. So what position is this officer in at this point? He's on the ground. He's looking at the ground. And then what do you hear? Play it. Stop it. How many did you hear after that? Four more. Two, while he was on the ground, 
In two more ads, this officer was running literally for his life back to that police car. That's malice. That's Malcolm Moore. He attempted to kill this officer and almost did with malice. I asked you at the very first of this that I would come back here and ask you for one thing and one thing only. And I'm going to do that. When you come back with a verdict, speak the truth. Thank you.